So today we will look about rebound hammer test. So first of all, we need to understand what is the meaning of rebound. Bounce back through air after hitting something hard. So this is the basic of a rebound hammer test and the general meaning of rebound. So let's start. The rebound hammer also known as Swiss hammer test is one of the oldest and best known methods for comparing the concrete present in different parts of the structures. It is one of the oldest and best known method. The rebound number is obtained by the use of hammer as shown in figure. I will show this figure right now. That consists of a spring control mass that consists of a spring control mass that slides on a plunger within a tubular casing. So let's see. So it consists of a spring control mass that slides on a plunger. This is the plunger within a tubular casing. This is the tubular casing. All right. So we will see next the plunger of the hammer when pushed against the surface of the concrete the plunger of the hammer when pushed against the surface of the concrete the spring control mass is retracted and the spring is compressed so we need to understand this point the plunger of the hammer uh, suppose this is the concrete surface and this is our hammer so what is happening right now the plunger of the hammer when pushed against the surface of the concrete when it is pushed against this surface of the concrete the spring is compressed so i have already told you it consists of a spring like this so when you compress it the spring reaches a certain point that it can't be retracted after death. So what happened? It automatically releases itself. So it is the general basic of spring. It has a certain point till which it can retract. But after a certain point, it will not retract. It will automatically release itself. So that is the basic fundamental of this test. Okay. So we will start again. When the mass is completely retracted, as I have already told you, the spring is automatically released and the mass is driven against the plunger, which impacts the concrete and rebounds. Okay, so I hope this point is very much clear to you. The extent of such rebound depend upon the surface hardness of the concrete. So I, I think this is the most clear part of this theory the extent of such rebound depend upon the surface hardness of the concrete so basically what we are looking in this test the surface hardness of the concrete okay the rebound is read off along a graduated scale and this value is designated as the rebound number or rebound index so what we designate it as rebound number and rebound index most hammers come with a calibration chart most of the hammers come with calibration chart relating the compressive strength which consists okay so let's understand this test with the help of diagram so you can clearly see here this is the hammer mass spring controlled mass and this is the plunger and it is operating through a tubular casing so the basic phenomenon is this this is the concrete surface and when we are just uh, pushing the hammer on this concrete surface the hammer is getting inside and the spring control mass is retracted and it reaches a certain point there it releases automatically and when it releases it just impact on this concrete surface very hard so in this way we get the we get our rebound number okay fine okay so let's move forward 
in rebound hammer testing the only the concrete in the immediate vicinity of the plunger influences the rebound value i hope this point is very much clear only the concrete in the immediate vicinity of the plunger influences the rebound value so rebound value is influenced by what the concrete in the vis immediate vicinity of the plunger hence the test is very sensitive to the local conditions where the test is performed what what do you mean by local conditions local condition means generally the condition most probably the environmental condition present on the site all right or some different type of durability issues which is present on the site so let's move forward it is suggested that six rebound numbers must be taken for a test at least we should take nearly six rebound number for a test the various factors that affect that can affect the rebound number include the type of cement there are different types of cement and number of cement depends upon the uh, c3a dry calcium silicate dry calcium silicate the type of formwork what is the type of formwork present presence of the surface carbonation so we need to understand what is carbonation so carbonation is ingress of carbon dioxide inside the hard concrete curing and the age of the test so this test largely depend on surface texture also and the orientation of instrument means at what angle the instrument has been placed the rebound number can be divided into following four types as shown in figure it is generally divided into four types of rebound number based on the impact energy required for different applications so let's see uh, what are the rebound numbers that are divided into four types so here it is the type so the type of concrete n type l type m type p type n means for normal weighting concrete l means for lightweight concrete m means mass concrete that is road air field pavements hydraulic structures p concrete of low strength <clears throat> okay so these are the rebound number 2.25 for normal weight concrete 0 0.75 for lightweight concrete m for mass weight concrete so we are using rebound number as 30 and it is very much different from these number this number this number this much a huge difference 30 in mass concrete so we need to understand this there is a huge difference between the impact energy required for lightweight concrete mass concrete oh sorry lightweight concrete normal weight concrete and concrete with low strength there is a huge difference between the rebound number okay so let's move forward so let's see what is the application of this rebound hammer test rebound hammer test is used for estimating the uniformity and the quality of concrete this i have told you in the starting only that why this test is being used so it is generally being used for the uniformity and to check the quality of the concrete present in the structure monitoring the strength of development what is the strength development at 7 days 28 days 56 days or whatever till one year in situ strength estimation and accessing the relative quality of the structural members in order to access the quality of other members related to the structure so we basically use this test in these process so what are all the advantages of this test it is simple and quick method so the first advantage of this test is it is very simple and it is very quick and as a civil engineer in today's time you want everything to be quick it is useful in locating the areas of poor quality of concrete 
if there is any poor quality of concrete used in this structure then we can access this with the help of this test <clears throat> a large number of measurement can be rapidly taken so as to map a large exposed area of concrete so this test can also be used for a large map of structures it means it can be used for a huge structures also and we can have a good result so what are all the limitation let's see so the results are affected by the angle of test so at what angle you are testing or placing this rebound hammer depends a lot on giving the rebound number so we need to understand this results are affected by the angle of test surface smoothness if surface is not smooth it is not going to give you a proper result mixed proportion of the concrete if mixed proportion is not good it does not provide provide a reliable prediction of the strength of the concrete if these are these points are there then it doesn't provide you a predict prediction of strength reliable prediction of strength of concrete if all the affecting factors are taken into consideration then the strength of concrete may be determined to an accuracy of plus minus 15 percent else the possible error may be up to plus minus 25 so yes we need to understand this point and it is very much important if we are performing this test on site the things which we must keep in mind is the angle of test mixed proportion surface to smoothness otherwise it is not going to give us a reliable prediction of the strength of the concrete thank you very much all right so ultimately i would like to add some points to this rebound hammer test as we know today as a contractor or as a client we need to complete the project as early as possible so it is good as per the economical part of you but it's not good as per the structural part of you so this rebound hammer test is one of the oldest method which we generally used to do in older times and today also we are doing this but basically now people prefer upv test that is ultraviolet violet pulse velocity test because uh, it gives us a reliable value because here we are not able to get the reliable value if we doesn't satisfy these points these three points <clears throat>